It's a big world out there with plenty to do and explore. And there are a lot of big problems facing us right now, like pollution and global warming. Now is the time that we all should get together to help solve these problems. So where do we start? Well, the first step is learning all we can about the problems facing the Earth. And then figuring out ways to help solve them. We call that exploring. Right now we're going to explore hydrogen, hydrogen fuel, fuel cells. cells. What exactly is a fuel cell? Well, it's an electrochemical conversion device. What's that mean? It basically means that a fuel cell makes electricity using a chemical reaction, much like a battery does. Fuel cells consist of three basic elements, a negatively charged electrode called the anode, a positively charged electrode called the cathode, and an electrolyte. Fuel cells work through catalysis, that is, they separate the electrons and protons in a fuel, usually hydrogen gas, and force the electrons to pass through a circuit, which creates a chemical reaction that produces electricity. The membrane electrode assembly, which is the heart of the fuel cell, has a, an electrode on either side of a polymer membrane. And the hydrogen is supplied to the electrode on one side, called the anode, at the anode, the hydrogen comes across platinum particles, very small platinum. Platinum is a metal like gold or silver. And when the hydrogen contacts the platinum, it splits apart into protons and electrons. The protons are able to go through the polymer electrolyte membrane. The electrons, however, are not able to go through that uh, polymer film. And so they travel outside of the fuel cell, and that's what provides the current. Then to close the circuit, they flow back into the other side of the fuel cell. So that side of the fuel cell is called the cathode. And on the cathode, the protons, electrons, and oxygen all react again on platinum to form water. The principle of the fuel cell was first discovered by a German scientist, Christian Friedrich Schonbein, in 1838. The first working cell was demonstrated by a Welsh scientist, Sir William Robert Grove, in 1839. But it wasn't until the 1950s that two chemists working for the General Electric Company in the United States, W. Thomas Grubb and Leonard Nydrich, modified the fuel cell design to be used to power spacecraft in the Gemini program. Then, in 1959, a team led by Harry Eyrig built a 15-kilowatt fuel cell-powered tractor, proving fuel cells could be used to power vehicles. Early fuel cells held promise as an efficient and non-polluting way to generate electricity. They were silent and modular in design, which made them well-suited for automobiles. But to automakers at the time, they were a new and untested technology and the internal combustion engine, which burned gasoline or diesel fuel, had successfully powered cars and trucks for more than 50 years. Automakers saw no reason to change. However, both gasoline and diesel fuel are made from crude oil, which is a fossil fuel, a non-renewable resource that is not easily replaced when it is used up, and releases pollution when it is burned. Today, the gradual buildup of tailpipe emissions from cars and trucks has been blamed on polluting the environment and creating global warming. Since using fossil fuels contributes to pollution and global warming, finding new, more economical ways to get around has become a high priority for scientists and engineers. Here at the Renewable Energy Laboratory in Golden, Colorado, they are testing many different types of alternative fuels, including hydrogen fuel cells and ways to produce safe and inexpensive hydrogen. I work very closely with the companies that make fuel cells and we're trying to develop different technologies that help them speed up their manufacturing processes so that they can make more. And what we work on is technologies that help them keep the right level of quality of the fuel cells as they're making them faster and faster. Other researchers here at NREL are working on scientific projects at the membrane electrode assembly level itself. So they're working on trying to 
decrease the amount of platinum or find other materials instead of platinum to use as the catalyst. They're working on better uh, polymer electrode membranes to use uh, that stand up to higher temperatures that will allow the fuel cell actually to operate more efficiently. In order to be practical for use in automobiles, fuel cells have to be made lighter and more compact and be made to generate more power than they do today. That's the challenge facing engineers here at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. At NROS testing grounds in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, engineers have replaced a gasoline engine in this car and modified it to run on hydrogen fuel cells. They have also built this experimental hydrogen plant and refueling station to determine the safest, most efficient way to refuel hydrogen-powered automobiles. So the refueling for a fuel cell uh, will be very similar to the refueling process that uh, you're used to seeing your parents do with their cars. Uh, there will be a refilling station for hydrogen uh, and it will have a pump uh, that you hold in your hand and essentially attach into a hole in the side of the car just like refueling gasoline. At the refueling station there will be either hydrogen tanks that have hydrogen that was produced elsewhere or the refueling station may have one of a few different kinds of devices that actually generate hydrogen itself. In either case when you attach the refueling uh, spout to your car, the hydrogen will pass through and into the high pressure tank in your car. So very similar uh, at a simple way to the refueling of a gasoline vehicle. Unlike gasoline, hydrogen cannot be simply pumped out of the ground and refined. It has to be created through a chemical reaction. For hydrogen fuel cells to become a practical way to power cars and trucks, engineers have to devise a safe and easy way to make hydrogen and replenish the hydrogen in fuel cells. One day, this experimental hydrogen refueling station may replace your friendly neighborhood gas station. Until that time, the challenge to scientists here is how to design a totally new system for powering cars that is practical enough to compete with gasoline and diesel oil. Not only do they have to figure out how to run cars on hydrogen, but they're working on ways to make and distribute hydrogen safely and inexpensively. This scale model of a hydrogen plant demonstrates one promising way to produce hydrogen using only water and pollution-free solar energy. The process begins when solar photovoltaic cells take energy from the sun and turn it into electricity. The electricity is sent to an electrolysis cell which takes ordinary water and splits it into its two elements, hydrogen and oxygen. The electricity from the PV cells starts a chemical reaction inside the electrolysis cell, which separates the hydrogen gas bubbles and sends them into the tube on the right, and the oxygen bubbles into the tube on the left. These plastic tubes represent storage tanks, where the gases are stored until they are ready to be used. This is the first step in the cycle needed to make hydrogen, a power source to make electricity, and an electrolysis cell to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. The next step is to convert the hydrogen and oxygen back into water. It's that chemical reaction inside the fuel cell that produces electricity. From the storage tanks, hydrogen is fed into one side of the fuel cell and oxygen is fed into the other. The center of the cell is made up of a polymer plastic membrane with electrodes attached to each side. One side is the cathode and the other is the anode. When oxygen builds up on the cathode side and hydrogen passes by the anode side, it creates a chemical reaction that produces electrical current. You can demonstrate the process by connecting an electrical motor to the positive and negative sides of this small fuel cell. The current it produces can run a fan. The more hydrogen and oxygen you feed to the fuel cell, the more electricity you can produce, and the faster the fan will spin. By stacking fuel cells together, you can generate even more power. A fuel cell big enough to run an automobile measures about two feet square. That's just a little more than half a meter square. In fuel cell cars, the electricity created by the cell is then stored in batteries, 
and used to power electric motors connected to the car's wheels. As long as a fuel cell has hydrogen and air, it can make electricity indefinitely. The only thing that comes out of a hydrogen-powered car's tailpipe is harmless water vapor. The system is blowing out extra water from the fuel cell um, because the gases need to get uh, through the system. So now we're ready to go. Just put it in drive like a normal car. Start driving away. The noise you hear is actually the air compressor providing additional air to the system. One of the big advantages of a uh, hydrogen powered automobile is that there are no tailpipe emissions. Uh, we can make the fuel domestically from renewable energy, in particular wind or solar, and uh, reduce the amount of oil that we uh, import. So this car looks like a normal car from the outside, but the insides are different. Uh, there's no gasoline engine under the, the hood. There's no transmission. Um, it's an electric motor um, that drives the wheels. And the fuel cell is actually under our seat right now, uh, under the floor. And then there's some hydrogen tanks. And then there's actually an electric battery in the back, uh, like today's gasoline hybrids have. So the fuel cell takes hydrogen from the tanks stored underneath the rear of the car and oxygen from the air and it combines them, converts it into electricity, water, and heat. And that's it. No emissions at all. It drives great. In fact, let me put my foot to the floor here and we'll do some acceleration. It's actually quite fun to drive. Now when I put my foot on the brake, we're storing those electrons, so storing that energy back into the battery and charging it back up. So there's no uh, no gasoline, no combustion. Uh, it's very quiet except for the compressor noise, which you can hear. When I take my foot off the gas, uh, it get, gets even quieter. There are very few ways to actually get um, renewable fuels into a car. There's biofuels like ethanol, ethanol or biodiesel. Um, there's uh, electricity, which requires a, a battery electric vehicle, and then there's hydrogen. And all of them have their, their challenges, but um, hydrogen has the ability to provide <clears throat> fast refueling, uh, domestically produced fuel, and uh, basically uh, zero emissions, which is, uh, and, and long range, which is very difficult for battery electric vehicles to do. So the hydrogen that we're uh, consuming in this car right now actually came from uh, renewable energy. It came from splitting water using electricity generated from the sun and from wind power. So we're researching how to most efficiently use the wind and solar power to generate hydrogen to power vehicles uh, running on hydrogen like this fuel cell car. Uh, one thing we're finding out is that the uh, efficiency can be quite good and uh, especially in terms of climate change, uh, very low uh, carbon dioxide emissions from the whole process. Uh, actually, it's zero from renewables, but even when the car uses hydrogen that comes from natural gas, it's about half of the carbon dioxide of a normal gasoline combustion car. I love working on this stuff. In fact, I'm excited to be out here today driving the car again. It's a beautiful day in Colorado, and uh, we're, we're driving on uh, renewable fuel, producing nothing but water as, as a emission. Fuel cells do have their disadvantages. Currently, they are very expensive to build, and right now, hydrogen is considered an energy loser because it costs more to make it than you get by using it. Also, to be practical, hydrogen refueling stations like this would have to become as common as today's gas stations, a very expensive proposition. It will definitely take time to make the transition, but it's very expensive right now when there's only a few vehicles and a few refueling stations. We basically need a, a car, a full functioning car that can replace today's gasoline automotive, uh, automobile. And the reason for that is if we don't actually replace it, all we're gonna do is reduce our usage. Gasoline hybrids are great and I drive one myself, uh, but it still uses gasoline. So we need to find a way to get off of gasoline and onto a renewable fuel. Engineers and scientists say all these obstacles can be overcome, as long as pollution and global warming keep threatening our world. 
So watch out gasoline, ethanol, and biodiesel. The next big thing in automotive fuel could very well be hydrogen. You know, there's still a lot more to learn about the world and what makes it go around. And it's never too late to explore. You might be surprised about all you can learn. Until next time, I'm Andrea. And I'm Michael. See ya. Out, Out there, there exploring. exploring.